So uh, I just want to let everyone know that my name is Pat Buffard. I am the chair and an RM member, and I'll go as I see you, Lisa. Lisa Freeman, I'm a public member. Uh, uh, Sal. Hi, I'm Sal. I'm an RN member. Gina. Uh, yes, uh, Gina Reiners, and I am an RN member and an APRN. And Cheryl. Oh, wait, my, uh, good morning. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Risha, and um, I think I'm a public member. I'm new to the board. Yes, you are, and welcome. Do you want to give us a little background of who you are, just so we know something about you? Um, sure. Um, so um, I started my career as a pediatric nurse at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Um, when I moved back to Connecticut, I um, went into school nursing, um, and not schools of nursing, but actual school nursing in K-12. Um, and was a supervisor in a large district, uh, went on to be the state school nurse consultant um, and at the State Department of Education. And I have to say the board was a great supporter of me in that process because there were many issues in schools that came before you. Um, and so I always appreciated your work. Um, I moved into um, Southern Connecticut State University as a professor of nursing. Um, and I retired um, after a stint as the chair of the department in 2021. Um, currently, I serve as a dissertation advisor for doctoral students and as a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing, I serve on the expert panel for child, um, adolescent and family health. Well, great, welcome. Uh, and you are a public member because you are not officially working as a nurse anymore for a certain number of years. OK, so welcome, Mary. Mary Dietman, I'm an RN member and an APRN. And Rebecca, you're on the phone. Rebecca, you're muted. I thought I saw something that she was on the phone. Dara? Hi. Yeah. Hello. Can you was she uh, Rebecca on the phone? She, yes. Yeah. Hi. This is Rebecca Martinez, LPN member. OK, thank you, Rebecca. I thought you were on the phone. Can you um, can you can you take the mute off of me and I'll mute on my end on the phone? Yes, you're all set. That thank you, Rebecca. Yep, thank you. Oh. I'm trying. This is a brand new computer for me, so I'm trying to find the the volume because I can't seem to hear a lot of people. OK, so did I miss any board members on my little squares? I don't think so. Yes, and, uh, Michael uh, Cartier, yes. I'm here. Who's here? Mike Cartier, oh, my, public oh, member, Michael. not a nurse. Michael, our other brand new person. Yes, sorry for yeah. getting you. Somehow I don't see you in my square, so sorry. That's okay. I, I'm, I'm actually in my car. I'm driving to a hearing in Putnam, which should not take long, um, but I'm here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, and for the department, who wants to introduce themselves? <clears throat> All right. Uh, I'll start. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Helen, Helen Smith, Department of Public Health. All right, Helen. Dana, I see you. Good morning. Dana Dalton, Department of Public Health. And Ina, I see you. Good morning. Ina Ehrlich, Department of Public Health. Is Sue here? No, she's not. She's not here. All right. Well, Helen, we want to welcome you back. Uh, I know you were out for a few months, so it's good to see you again. So I'm happy to have you back and I'm sure your fellow workers are happy to have you back. Thank you for the welcome back. OK, and our council. Good morning, Liz Bannon, Assistant Attorney General. Okay. Good morning, Cindy Mahan, Assistant Attorney General. OK. 
And Pat, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the appropriate time to say um, we are dividing and conquering today, so I will be assisting the board with items one and two through the summary suspensions. Um, AAG Mahan will be assisting until the school issues and then AAG uh, Brooklyn Goldstein, who will be joining later, will be dealing with the school issues. OK, so uh, Liz, you're doing one and you're doing one and two. I'm correct. Really just two. I don't think the board needs my assistance oh, with one. Well, yeah. <laughs> OK, and so Cindy will be doing three, four, five, six and seven. That's right. Is that correct? And OK, that, that's all right. Correct. And OK, Alina and we'll join for eight. OK, and, and yes, so she's not on yet. OK. So before we officially, well, is there anyone else that want to just introduce themselves from either the department or the attorney general's office? Yeah, hasn't. Hi, Ryan Burns, Deputy Legal Director, DPH. OK, welcome again. And Good morning, Tara, Sheree, our Bonini. most important person, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, hi, good morning, uh, Tyra Puso, Board Liaison. OK, great, Every everyone, thank you. So before we begin, I just have to remind everyone that uh, these remote meetings are recorded and posted online for public viewing and usually the links on the website uh, that this is a. The meeting and any hearings we have are formal proceedings, so please. Uh, uh, behave appropriately and I expect to. Ha uh, that will happen as has happened recently, but I do have to do that to remind everyone that you are recorded for posterity's sake, so. <coughs> All right, first on the agenda are the minutes from March 6. Do I have a motion on the minutes as written? Lisa motion to accept the minutes as written. OK, OK, Second, Rebecca. Rebecca seconds any uh, edits. Corrections. OK, so do I have a um, I'll call the roll for approval of the minutes. So we have a first and second to approve the minutes as presented. Lisa. Yes. Sal. Yes. Gina. Yes. Cheryl. Uh, abstain. OK, uh, Mary. Abstain. OK, Rebecca. Yes. Michael. Yes. OK, thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda are the summary suspensions, and this was in our packet of information. This came er, this week, early this week. So first on the agenda is Alexandra Cavanaugh, RN, and for the respondent. Oh, OK, and for the department. For the department, good morning, Joelle Newton. Uh, Liz. Yes, hi, Liz Bannon. Um, <clears throat> I just want to make sure that I've, the board um, received. There were some filings filed by the respondent's attorney, Attorney Costello. She filed a request for a continuance as well as an objection to the motion for summary suspension. Has Have the board members received those documents? Yes, I'm seeing nods of affirmation. <laughs> OK, so my recommendation would be for the board to address the request for continuance first. Um, that was dated, I believe, March 18th. So the, um, on the advice of council, do I have a, a motion on the request for continuance? So my advice, um, this is a motion for summary suspension under the statute. Um, you know, summary suspensions really are uh, where a practitioner represents a clear and immediate danger to the public health and safety. So my advice would be to deny the request for a continuance. Um, the respondent, uh, this, the, the underlying statement of charges can go to a hearing in two weeks. So my advice would be to deny the request for a continuance. The department also filed an objection to that request. Correct. I'll make a motion, Pat, to deny the uh, continuance in the matter of Alexander Kavanaugh, REN petition number 2023-249. Okay, do I have a second? Second, Gina. Discussion? I, I just want to say that logic says that what we were just advised by our council 
um, has to be followed because it, it is there's a clear and present danger and the hearing is what will determine that. The other comment I'd like to make, it's Gina, is yeah. that um, with regard to this situation is that according to the information we received is the respondent's nursing license lapsed on, lapsed on January 31st, 2024, but she still, according to this, has the 90 day grace period and can renew her license if I got this straight. And Correct. so I agree that it makes sense, you know, to deny the continuance also. And this is Liz Bannon. Gina, that's a good point. Um, under the statute, and I believe, let me pull up the correct citation, it's 19A88, I believe, subsection F. Um, after a practitioner's license expires, there is a 90-day window in which that practitioner can reapply. So um, despite the fact that this individual license did expire on January 31st, there is that 90, we are within that 90-day window. Pat, it's Mary. Yes. Just another comment um, in regards to this case. Um, I know that several of you attended the mid-year meeting for NCSBN on ground. I attended um, remotely the first day, and so there were there were there was discussion, excuse me, um, regarding these cases. And um, so I think this is consistent with the discussion that took place through the National Council. Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have a motion in the second to deny the respondent's request for a continuance. Uh, Lisa? Yes. Sal? Aye. Gina? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Mary? Aye. Uh, Rebecca? Aye. Michael? Yes. Okay, so the motion to deny the um, respondent's request for a continuance has been denied. Uh, Pat, just so now Barry, we all... Pat, yes. this is Liz Bannon, just quickly, what was your vote? My, oh, my vote? Oh, it was I. I'll start with myself, I Excuse guess. Me, it's Camille. I'm, I'm on here as well. Uh, so now uh, the request from the department uh, from uh, Attorney Newton uh, for a summary suspension. Do I have that request from the department on the request for a summary suspension? Are you looking for a motion, Pat? Yes. I'll make a motion to affirm the summary suspension of Alexandra Kavanaugh, RN, petition number 2023-249. Do I have a second? Second, Gina. Okay. Uh, discussion? This is Liz Bannon, just quickly. Um, for the board, the board can, can also consider the objection for summary suspension when discussing <coughs> the motion for summary to suspension. <clears throat> Should we, we, should we, well, we, should we deny the objection or just go ahead and do the summary and that's by, by default? So those two things mm -hmm. can be done at the same time. Um, in, in granting a motion for summary suspension, the board is kind of by operation denying the objection. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, or overruling the objection, excuse me. All right. Um, well, there's no summary suspension because we haven't voted yet, correct? So maybe that would be better to separate it just to be clear. Certainly the board can, if the board is inclined to grant the motion for summary suspension, the board can first overrule the objection and then grant the motion for summary suspension. My, my point though is just that the board can consider the objection when discussing the presentation of the motion for summary suspension. Okay, do you want to revise um, the motion, Mary, just a little bit? No? Just I, don't, to... I don't see a need to based on our vote prior to this. Well, it's, 
for for this one, it was two pieces. One, she object. She wanted a continuance of the hearing, which we said no, which we already voted on. And now she objected to the entire summary suspension being not pro uh, appropriate. So, uh, oh, okay. So you want me to add, um, in addition to affirming this um, summary suspension, you want me to add that we are denying the request for continuance is that what yeah or overruling or overruling the objection to the objection. Suspension. objection okay i i will certainly add that as a revision okay gina you second yes i second okay <laughs> still seconds yes i'm still seconding i okay. i uh okay i'm fine okay all right additional discussion no, um, only as uh, what we mentioned previously, these this particular um, um, individual is not educated to care for people. So she is a danger to the public. So no, no additional discussion on my part. This is part of the whole Nightingale uh, investigation. And so this is another piece of that. OK, so uh, Lisa. Yes. Okay, so we're voting to uh, affirm, to approve the summary and to overrule the objection from the respondent. So we're all clear, okay? So you said yes. Sal? Yes. Aye. Gina? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Mary? Aye. Rebecca? Aye. Michael? Yes. Aye for uh, me. Okay, that sounds weird. Okay, I guess I should call my uh, name. Quick question. This is Gina. Uh, yes. I just have a quick question for yeah. Attorney Bannon. Um, so in the past, we have not, you know, we either affirm or deny with regard to summary suspending a uh, respondent. So my question is, if if a respondent um, objects uh, to you, you know, to this motion, okay, of summarily suspending them. Do we in the future also, you know, make a motion with regard to that? So is, is that, because we haven't done that in the past, so I just want a clarification. This is Liz Bannon. Gina, it's That's a good that. question. Um, yes. I think that, so anytime anyone, either the department or a respondent makes a motion for the board's consideration, Technically, unless that motion is acted on, it just remains pending. Um, I think that historically what I'm hearing is the board, when it grants the summary suspension, it essentially moots out any objection, which is is fine too. It has the same kind of, um, op it's the same operative kind of posture, but I think it's probably a good idea to specifically respond to any motion or objection that's been presented to the board. Okay, Does that answer so I, your question? Yeah, I just wanted clarification. It's, it's really just technical. <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds like. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank sure. you kindly. <laughs> Next, hello, yes? I thought I heard someone say, excuse me. Okay, maybe not. Okay, next on the agenda is a summary suspension for uh, Janice Pierce. I'm, I'm sorry, Pierre RN, petition number 2023 248. And for the respondent. Okay, and for the department. Good morning for the department, Joelle Newton. Okay, so this was in our packet of information. Do I have a motion on this request for a summary suspension for Janice Pierre? And uh, unless I missed it, there were no objections or or continuance requests for this person, correct? Correct. I'll make the motion to um, approve the summary suspension for Janice Pierre, RN, mission number 2023-248. Okay, do I have a second? <clears throat> this is Sal, I'll second. Okay, discussion?
It's the same as the other with regard to, uh, you know, the Nightingale. I think it's Siena College, I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken. So it's the the same situation with regard to competence and having training and education uh, to be, uh, you know, obviously uh, reporting that she, this person did not have that. And so I think it's important that we summarily suspend uh, this this person. Okay. I agree with Gina's comments and um, that this individual does not have the educational preparation to um, to serve as a nurse within the state of Connecticut. Any other comments from board members? Okay, so I'm going to call the roll. Uh, uh, P, uh, Pat Bufard votes aye. Lisa? Aye. Sal? Aye. Gina? Aye. Cheryl? Aye. Mary? Aye. <laughs> Excuse me, Rebecca? Aye. Rebe uh, Michael? Aye. Okay. Um, so the motion uh, to grant a summary suspension has been approved. Um, last on the summary suspension is Simone Elizabeth Escoffery dash Dick RN. Petition number 2023-246. Do I have a motion on this? Re oh, and for the respondent? I believe this uh, from the respondent, there is also a request for a continuance uh, for Ms. Ms. Dick uh, and a, a, an objection from the department on the motion for the continuance. So we'll need a, a motion on the continuance, uh, similar to what we did earlier. So do I have such a motion? This is uh, Gina. I, I make a motion to deny the continuance for Simone Elizabeth Escafari that Dick RN 2023-246. And I'm sorry, Attorney Fazina, I forgot to have you introduce yourself. Good morning, <laughs> Linda Fazina for the department. Okay. Uh, all right, so we have a motion. Do I have a second to deny the request for continuance? Second, Mary. Se second, Mary. Okay, I was someone else almost seconded at two. Okay. Um, do I have a, a, any discussion at this time on that motion to uh, overrule the objection? Yeah, yeah, Mike uh, Hardier, what was the basis for requesting a continuance? Because the uh, I believe the lawyer uh, couldn't appear. Uh, I need a continuance. I received this notice after five on Friday, and I have a long-standing doctor's appointment this morning from the lawyer uh, Eon Smith. I, uh, this is Gina. My comment is that uh, we could uh, summarily suspend uh, Simone. The scoffery dick, and it could go to hearing, and then the attorney could be at the hearing, obviously. Um, so, you know, we're you know we're taking into consideration, obviously, the attorney's ability to be here and and want to, you know, give that person due diligence and also the respondent. But at the same token, um, you know, if it goes to hearing, the then hopefully we set up the right time so the the uh, attorney can be a part of that and represent the respondent. But I think we still could summarily suspend uh, the respondent. It's it has to do with Siena College also the same thing Nightingale if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and so, and so <clears throat> and so what it, <clears throat> if the <laughs> lawyers need additional time either one for uh, Kavanaugh or for uh, Scoffery Dick they can ask for continuance once we've. Uh, right. notify them that there is a summary suspension. So we're not denying them a continuance for preparation. We're denying them a continuance on the summary suspension request. <clears throat> yeah. So we have a motion a second to deny the request for continuance on the summary suspension, although this wasn't as clear as the other one, but just to be clear. So the motion is to deny this request for continuance on the matter of a uh, um, summary suspension, and I believe there was a, a department objected to that. Uh, Attorney Pazina? Yes, that's correct. It's an emergency motion. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Lisa. Aye. Sal. Aye. Gina. Aye. Cheryl. Yes. Mary. Aye. Rebecca. <coughs> Rebecca? Aye. Sorry, that was muted. That's okay. Michael? Aye. And I also vote aye. Um, so next is the uh, motion on the request for a summary suspension. Do I have a motion? Yes, this is Gina. I make a motion to summarily suspend Simone Elizabeth Escoffery Dick RN 20 petition number 2023-246. Okay. Do I have a second? Second, Mary. Okay. Discussion. I'll just say that we need to be consistent with these cases. And again, this uh, individual is not educationally prepared to practice nursing yeah. in the state of Connecticut. Okay. This is Gina. I concur with uh, my colleague, Mary. This the same situation. This is Lisa, as do I. I'm sorry. That last comments would person read. Is that you, Lisa? It's me, yes, Lisa, and I agree with both of them too. Okay. I, I think we don't have grounds to let them practice. Well, they have, yes, as outlined. Okay, yeah. okay so I'm going to call the roll again. Lisa? Yes. Uh, Sal? Aye. Gina? Aye. Cheryl? Aye. Mary? Aye. Rebecca? Aye. Michael? Aye. All right, so the motion to grant the summary suspension for Simone Elizabeth Escoffery Dick has passed, so we've approved that. All right, uh, so Attorney Bannon, are, are you signing off or you're just gonna be in the background? I'll be in the background. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Next on the agenda are um, memoranda of decision, and there were three, and oh. these were in our packet of information. Do I have a motion on the memoranda memoranda of decision for Sheila Harrington, RN? This is Gina. I make a motion to uh, affirm the memorandum of decision for Sheila Harrington, RN, petition number 2023-271. It is a six-month suspension then followed with a three-year probation. Right, okay. Uh, do I have a second? Second, Mary. All right, discussion. Uh, a lot of times, as we know, our discussions range, I, I b believe, but in my notes, I had the fact Everything was correct, but I thought we added um, the medical therapy person, the one who prescribes the medication as part of the process, part of the uh, MOD also. The, and it, did we just dis discuss it and then not do it? I mean, I, I have to admit, I did not go about back and listen to the to recordings to see. Uh, so I'm not sure what anyone else's notes say. I this is Gina. I don't have that in my notes, but again, I I did not go back to the the YouTube videos um, either. But I don't have it in my notes. That doesn't mean anything. It could happen. Uh, I believe she was. Um, I, I have my notes in the other room. I think we heard her on twelve six. Oh no, that that's wall. Never mind. Uh, I had to go get it. No, oh, yeah. So we heard her. Uh, we had the hearing on 
10 4 and 12 6 uh, in case people want to go back but um i had that in my notes so i don't know if the mod is complete Do we want to table this until we can clarify our notes? Uh, Attorney Mahon? Certainly. So if there's a motion to uh, continue this particular MOD until the next meeting so that everyone can have a chance to take a look at their notes and watch the video, and then there can be a vote on it at the next meeting. Okay. <clears throat> So do we have to vote no on the motion to approve it, affirm it, and then table it? Right, so it sounds like the motion was already made, so it's, yes. it seems that everyone would vote no, and then there'd be a motion to continue this till the next board hearing for a vote. Okay, okay so we have a motion and a second to uh, affirm this MOD for Sheila Harrington. Lisa. Yes. Wait. No, we're I, I think I got tripped up. We're voting to not approve. We're voting to approve it. Then I say no. Yeah, OK, Sal. Nay. Gina. No. Cheryl. No. Mary. Nay. Rebecca. Nay. Michael. I'm going to abstain. All these hearings were prior to my being appointed on, on the board. So, uh, and then I, I'm almost at the Putnam Courthouse. So I'm going to sign off, just so you know. Um, but then I don't think I'll be long, and I'll, I'll come back if that's okay. Well, just let uh, Tyra know when you come back, you know, with an email or a text. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Just Thank note you. that for the minutes, uh, Tyra. Okay. Um, and so the if, motion I, if I could to, just inter, interject, Pat, with Michael signing off, will we have quorum, Tyra? Yes, you still have over um, the, the quorum, yes. Okay, just wanted to check, thank you. Yes, we have seven, so yeah. Good, thank you. All right, thank you. Yep, uh, so the motion to affirm the MOD has uh, been voted, uh, has been denied. So do I have a new motion? Yes, this is Gina. I make a motion to table uh, this MOD uh, to the next meeting, board meeting, uh, for Sheila Harrington RN, petition number 2023-271. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second on that motion? Second, Mary. Uh, additional discussion? Okay. Uh, Lisa? I say I. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sal. I. Gina. I. Cheryl. I. Mary. I. Rebecca. I. And I say I. Uh, so the motion to table has been approved. Uh, okay. Next on the agenda is a Emma. Emma a memorandum of decision for Christopher J. K. R. N. It's Rebecca. Okay. I make a motion to affirm the memorandum of, of decision for Christopher K. R. N. Petition number 2023-1397 and this is for revocation. Correct. Okay. Do I have a second? Second, this Mary. Okay, uh, discussion. It's what the outcome that we uh, during fact finding and remedy came to for uh, Mr. K. So uh, the motion is to affirm the MOD for revocation for Christopher K. Uh, Lisa. Aye. Sal. Aye. Gina. Aye. Cheryl. Aye. Mary? Aye. Rebecca? Aye. And I vote aye. Uh, so the motion to affirm the MOD as presented has been approved. Next is an MOD for AWA 
and Deo RN. And this was in our packet of information. Do I have a motion on this request? Uh, I'm so sorry, a motion on this memorandum of decision as presented. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the MOD for uh, when the Deo RN petition number 2022 dash 1116. Um, this is for revocation. Co correct. Um, we have a motion to affirm the MOD as presented. Do I have a second? second this is Sal, I'll second. Okay, second. Additional comments or discussion? <clears throat> okay, hearing none. Uh, Lisa? Aye. Sal? Aye. Gina? Aye. Cheryl? Aye. Rebecca, uh, Mary? Aye. Rebecca? Aye. And I vote aye for affirmation. So uh, that's part of the MOD process there. So next on the agenda is a modification of a consent order. And is Mr. Bruhender in the audience or council? Please unmute yourself. Uh, oh. Yes, I'm here, Chris Brunder. You are here, okay. Uh, Attorney Fasina. Yes, Linda Fazina for the department. Um, respondent is represented by attorney Mary Alice Moore Lenhart. I thought I saw her on the line at one point. Good morning. Oh, you are here. Welcome. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, so uh, this was in our packet of information. Do I have a motion on this? Uh, the modification of a consent order as uh, presented. I'll make a motion to approve the modification of consent order for Christopher Lee Brunder, RN, petition number 2024-79. Okay, do I have a second? Lisa, second. Okay, discussion. Well, as we well know, a uh, fourth year can be very um, um, difficult. People get comfortable in their, um, how should I say, their probation and their sobriety, and then they uh, ingest uh, a food substance that uh, destroys all the good work they've had the three years previously. And so the department and the respondent have agreed to just extend the current consent order for three additional months, which will end on you know, uh, December 28th. Uh, I think it's a good solution for something that happened. Um, so I can support uh, the motion to approve this consent order. <clears throat> Any other discussion? OK, uh, Lisa. Hi. Sal. Hi. Gina. Hi. Cheryl. Hi. Mary. Hi. Rebecca. Hi. Okay, and uh, I vote aye. So uh, good luck, Mr. Brunhender, uh, with your new consent order. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Attorney Linhart. Okay, uh, next is a reinstatement consent order for Naomi Williams Wall, RN. Uh, I believe that this came before us on uh, January, and this is a reinstatement. So the department asked if we had suggestions for this reinstatement. Uh, attorney, uh, no, uh, is Ms. Uh, Williams, Wall, Williams Wall or counsel for Ms. Wall? In the audience, please unmute yourself. Uh, Dana, Hi, good morning. Uh, you here? Yes. Okay, welcome. And uh, Dana, uh, do you want to just uh, highlight the changes based on what we suggested? <clears throat> uh, this, this is Attorney Joelle Newton for the department. I can do that if that's okay with you. All right. I, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. I'm sorry. And for the department, Joelle Newton. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's what happens Hi, when uh, you're in the dark. 
Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, um, Attorney Newton. <clears throat> so not metaphorically, though. Uh, so this was the reinstatement consent order um, and uh, the board made recommendations on January 3rd of 2024 with the $5,000 civil penalty, monthly urine screens, monthly medication compliance reports, monthly therapy and employer reports, anonymous or support meetings, and no solo practice. The respondent has already successfully completed an ethics course. This was the case from the uh, state, New York State, correct? Correct. Uh, in 2023, the state of New York had ordered a consent order that imposed discipline on her New York nursing license. And that was based in part on her failure to, disclo to disclose a criminal conviction uh, and that she had surrendered her Connecticut registered nurse license when she applied for the New York nursing license. Okay. Do I have a motion on this uh, reinstatement consent order for uh, Naomi Williams Wall, RN? Yeah, I'm just, I'm, this is Cindy Mahan. Just going to interject. I think at this point, we're just seeking additional recommendations from the board. There does not need to be any motion or vote. Oh, because we already did that in January 3rd. And this is the outcome of that. Right. So I'm just unclear as to what the board is voting on because the department would be deciding whether or not they will pursue the reinstatement consent order. And it's my understanding pursuant to regulation that at this point we're just seeking recommendations from the board as you did last time. I understand you gave recommendations, but I don't know that there is a requirement for a vote. Right. Okay, so we're just uh, okay. So are there anything additional? that board members would like to add as they thought about this since January. As we know, the reinstatement usually doesn't come to the board, if especially if they surrendered. Um, I don't remember. Um, Pat, I'm trying to find in my notes, but I thought we said for this person longer than one year. I don't know if anybody else has that in their notes. I'm trying to find the paper that well, I, wrote I believe she's uh, she's on probation in New York until 2025. So. I, I, I don't re I mean, we see these some um, we see these, so I don't remember if we wanted more or we were just knowing that she was going to be in New York that we didn't really need. We just wanted to make sure her Connecticut license was disciplined. Does anyone else have notes? Uh, uh, my notes had one year. Yeah, yeah, that's what my notes. I think because we had asked for additional information, and that's when she. Then we had gotten the New York uh, probation language, and so she's on probation there until 2025. I think is that correct, Attorney Newton? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Okay, additional comments, questions? So I, I assume now, Attorney Newton, you know <clears throat> how to proceed? Um, well, the, 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 the reinstatement has a signatory line for the board to sign. Right. I think that that's why it's in front of the board. There was something unique about this case. For some reason, it had to come to the board, even though it was a reinstatement. But it, I... Do you remember what, what, exactly yes, the circumstances? I mean, it's, yes, it's because she signed. A st it's the language of the surrender required this to come before the board. Right. That's because okay. she was she was subject to to discipline. So. Okay. So, so we. So, sorry. Go ahead, Attorney Newton. Oh no! So I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, so that, this is for the board for so it's yeah. a reinstatement. For, so the board is a signatory as well. Yeah. Okay. That's why I, 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 I understand. So given vote. given that given that information, then the board should take a vote, seeing as this is requiring a board signature. Yeah, this is unusual in that because of that. Uh, did we have a motion already? No, not yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. So do I have a motion on this uh, reinstatement consent order for Naomi Williams Wall? 
This is Gina. I make a motion to affirm the reinstatement consent order for Naomi Williams Wall RN petition number 2023-186. Do I have a second? Second, Lisa. Okay. Lisa seconds. Okay. Discuss additional discussion. Okay, hearing none, I'm going to call the vote. Uh, Lisa? Aye. Uh, Sal? Aye. Gina? Aye. Cheryl? Aye. Mary? Aye. Rebecca? Aye. Okay, and I vote aye. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Williams, for attending. Okay, next on the agenda is a consent you, order. Victoria Stork Ape. I'm sorry, what? Okay. Next on the consent order for a Victoria Stork APRN. But do I have a motion on this consent order? This is Gina. I make a motion to affirm the consent order for Victoria Victoria Storky PRN petition number 2019-1241 with petition number 2021-227. And the proposed consent order provides for a reprimand and $2,500 civil penalty. Respondent has completed coursework to the department's satisfaction in the diagnosis and treatment of sexually transmitted diseases and then management of the elevated PSA. Okay. Do, is Ms. Stork in the audience or counsel? Good morning, uh, board. Ed Bayer from Gefeller. Lori, I'm here on behalf of Victoria Stork, who's also present. Okay, and for the department? Good morning, Linda Fazina for the department. Okay, so we have a motion to approve this consent order. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mary seconds, okay. Discussion? So, uh, Pat, this is Sal. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I, I think uh, the fine should be higher, and I think this practitioner should have um, physician oversight for a period of time uh, to make sure she's practicing correctly. Okay, so uh, you would not approve this consent order as presented? Correct. Okay. Other comments? If I may comment, Ed Mayer. Uh, attorney Mahan, we don't usually. Could we allow the? Uh... Yeah, I, I assume that Mr. Mayor is not part of the board. No, he's right, the, then... he's he's the lawyer of record. Okay, well, well at, at this yep at at this point, let's hear from the board members. Okay. Other board members. Any comments? Um, this there. is Mary. I think everyone knows my feeling on um, fines and that I, I feel that we do not as a board uh, usually um, institute the fines um, to the extent that we should. So um, I would support uh, Sal's discussion on raising the fine. How, how about uh, his discussion on the doctor oversight for a period of time? The, um, the oversight, let me just take a look at that again. Is it, is that not in here? No. I, yeah, I didn't see any doctor's oversight, which I think should be for a period of time until we, you know, uh, have a, you know, better understanding that she um, is, you know, practicing safely and getting back to patients in a timely fashion and understanding that I think taking a class and working alongside a physician or with physician oversight is is important. Well, 
I guess my response to that would be why a physician and not an APRN? Um, another, uh, I just said that physician, if, if we feel that APR, another APRN oversight, I'm, I'm good with that too. Is the, um, is the respondent uh, independent at this point? Do we know that, that the respondent is independent or not? Uh, Attorney Fasina? I, I do not know that. Um, I don't know if um, Attorney Mayor. She, if she's not independent, then she would have oversight. She has to have oversight at this point or a collaborative agreement. Uh, if, if this is an independent practice or if, you know, obviously she's in an institute, an agency or institution. So does anybody know that? Does the does attorney I, know that? Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to respond. Um, oh, you can respond to that question. Well, as as to that question, um, since this arose, which happened in the Department of Corrections, which I was hoping to have an opportunity to discuss, um, um, Ms. Stork is um, no longer with the DOC, and she's presently. Um, had subsequently earned a master's degree in psychiatry, and she's working um, for a behavioral health unit. So she's not acting independently in that capacity. So does that does that answer your question, uh, Gina? She's not acting independently. Okay, it it does. Um... Yeah, because you, you, what you're saying, attorney, is that she is working for some kind of agency or institution, and then there's obviously her supervisor, be it an MD or an APRN, that's involved. Am I getting that clear? Again, Ed, that's fair if I could respond. I think that that's correct. Okay. Um, I would like an opportunity to respond to this I issue of fine. Certainly. So um, I do think this is Cindy Pat. I do think it's appropriate at this point if attorney mayor um, and or attorney Fazina had any comments um, in response to the board's concerns. Attorney Fazina. Uh, um, I'm just getting a, a message from my client that um, um, Ms. Stork has submitted paperwork to be independent, uh, to be an independent practitioner. Okay, so that this is Gina speaking. So that you know that puts a different slant on this because obviously if she, you know, submitted her paperwork and then she becomes independent, you know, that's a different story. If she's not independent, you know, obviously, you know, there's somebody overseeing her, and then we can we can uh, talk about what Sal discussed about having an APRN, as Mary discussed, in um, some oversight. So she's, it sounds like she's planning. I mean, we don't know that, but it sounds like it because she submitted materials, right? Uh, Attorney Fazina. So um, yeah, okay. Well, that, that, that helps clarify for me. If, Thank you. If I could clarify, according to uh, Ms. Stork, she applied back in 2020, but she has not. But she never received anything and it has not been working independently. Hi, this is Rebecca. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, I'm sorry. This is Attorney Fazina. I, I could be wrong about this, um, but I think that when um, um, that uh, an APRN merely has to provide notification to the department that they are now engaging in independent practice. Um, once uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what the statutory requirements are as far as the number of hours that they have to have a collaborative arrange, arrangement with someone. But I believe once they've um, fulfill that requirement. It's just merely notifying us um, that they are now um, in independent this is, this is practice. Yes. So how it, how it works is that they submit materials to the Department of Public Health. This is Gina speaking. And then, you know, you keep those records and then it will say if you go on the website where the licenses are, you're, you know, look up a person's license, it will say on the right side if the person's independent or not. So you don't get anything back from the Department of Public Health saying we grant you this. You're sending in your information and then it is put on the website saying you're independent. For example, I'm independent. That's why I know what you know, I'm just giving you the 
information that I know of. This so is Rebecca be... Board of Ed member to South Point. Yeah. Um, if we wanted to put a collaborative agreement on it, if she is not working independently and she does have, or if she does have supervision, then it just won't impact her. But it would make sure that no matter what, she does have a collaborative uh, relationship, right? Yeah, we could do do that. Is just put a collaborative agreement on it, saying that during a particular period of time, I'm I'm making this up. You know, I don't know. Two years, one year, three year, whatever we come up with is that she needs to have a collaborative agreement with an APRN, an MD, whatever we decide. Agree. I think that's uh, what Rebecca said. I couldn't hear her clearly. My apologies, but I believe yeah. she said something of that nature. I think. Yes, that's that's what I was saying. Okay, thanks, Rebecca. Yeah, this is Lisa. I, I support Sal and what Rebecca is pointing out as well. I think that the collaborative agreement has to be added back in. Well, it, it, Ed Mayer, it, it was never in. There was never. Right. This, these arose in 2019. It's 2024. There was never any indication of a request for a collaborative agreement. It's been almost five years. There's been no other complaints. I mean, that should be indicia enough that she's been practicing without any issues. And as I mentioned, she's no longer in the Department of Correction system, which throughout these proceedings, as Attorney Fazina knows, there's been, and we've provided to them newspaper articles with regard to the problems, systemic problems within the Department of Corrections of which she was at McDougal a, uh, I think it was a level four or five um, maximum security prison with a thousand inmates and two APRNs. So, you know, this idea of raising the fine under these circumstances, this has been terribly, terribly upsetting to, to Ms. Stork, who's had to live with this. And the, the fine already is financially impacted. And, and she's had no other complaints outside of this DOC system, and she no longer works in the DOC system. And, 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 and I, you know, and I'm sorry, but, you know, having gotten to know her, she's, you know, one of the patients that's referred to in this, one of the allegations now, these were allegations that, according to the consent order, and, and she's taken these very seriously. I think she has over 40 to 50 credit hours of which she took on her own voluntarily um, in light of these. But, you know, the allegations were contested. Um, eventually, under the circumstances, decided with Attorney Fazina on this consent order but for instance, patient one, one of the one of the allegations is failure to complete or failure to document the rationale for not performing a complete physical exam based on the chief complaint on July 31, 2019, which has to do with the private aspect, privates of a maximum security prisoner when there was no available male chaperone. And, and the allegation was she failed to document that there was no male chaperone available. In a, in a prison system of which she's got a thousand inmates that are maximum security. There was nothing wrong with the exam, mind you. It was that she failed to document that there was no male chaperone available to do a private exam like that. So I, I, I think, you know, we need to put this into a little bit of context. And I understand that you don't have, you know, every single piece of documentation and whatnot. But I think trying to raise the fine is a severe penalty under these circumstances or any other um, 
know, modifications to the consent order at this point in time. She's no longer in the system. This is five years ago. The um, this is what happened five years ago, but the investigation didn't happen until a year ago, and that we're getting it a, a year after the investigation. Mary? <clears throat> I think it's a slippery slope when we start looking at yeah. the environment and saying, well, this is a maximum security prison and X, Y, and Z occurred. Um, this individual chose to work there, um, and all individuals have the right to um, competent health care in the state. That's my feeling. Yeah. That's yeah, I was just about to say essentially the same thing, but that we cannot allow ourselves to blame the environment. We have to measure the standards that we expect somebody to maintain. And, and this is about safety of the people who are receiving the care. And the fact that it's a maximum security prison is is somewhat irrelevant. It's actually quite irrelevant. So if the I, documentation I, would be would have bettered her back, you know, her backing up. But that that the fact that you know the exam wasn't able to be done to the standard that it should have been, documentation was very important. And you know, even even for us in our hearings, if it's not in writing, it doesn't exist, and that's kind of the rule of of everything. Pat, if I can if I can interject, this is Cindy yes. Mahan. Yeah. At this point, um, I just want to caution the board and council about you know getting too far afield and discussing yeah. things that could potentially come up at a hearing if that is where this is indeed going. So at this yeah. point, there's a motion pending to approve the consent order, and I would advise the board to vote on the motion. Right. It, 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 I was it's just gonna say that it sounds like we're doing a hearing here. <coughs> okay. So we have a motion and a second to approve this consent order as written. Lisa? No. Sal? Nay. Gina? Yes. Okay. Cheryl? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mary? Aye. Okay, you're approving the consent order as written. Is that what your I vote is? Yes, I am. Okay. Rebecca? Nay. Is Michael back? Okay. All right, so I didn't write this down. So Lisa's nay, Sal's nay, Gina's nay. No, I Cheryl, said yes. you were I? I said, excuse me, I said yes, Pat, Gina. Okay, Mary was I, Rebecca was nay. One, two, one, two. Two nays, one, two, three eyes. Wait, no, one, two. Oh, it's a tie. All right. Did I get that right? I have Lisa, Sal, and Rebecca. And Rebecca. A, mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. And then I have um, Gina, Gina, Cheryl, and Mary. Cheryl, Mary voting I yep, to so approve it. So it's so you need to vote. So you so need to, to vote. Break Pat. The tie. Pat, when I, you have to vote, is that Pat? Uh, <clears throat> I, I have, I'll vote I. So the motion to grant the summary, the consent order as written has passed. I'm going to put my name down here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next on the agenda are the hearings. Uh, uh, so uh, do I have a motion to remove the hearing for Christopher Lee Brunhender RN from the agenda? This is Gina. I make a motion to remove the, the hearing for Christopher Bruendo RN petition number 2024-79 from the agenda. Do I have a second? Second, Mary. Mary seconds. Okay. Any discussion at this time? We heard him as a notification. Um, so there was no need to hear a hearing. No, no need to have a hearing. 
to hear a hearing. OK, <clears throat> any discussion? <clears throat> OK, uh, Lisa. Hi. Mm, Sal. Hi. Gina. Hi. Cheryl. Hi. Mary. Hi. Rebecca. Hi. Uh, so the motion to remove uh, Christopher Lee Brenhender from the hearing agenda has been approved. <clears throat> Removed, approved, okay. And so then we'll begin the hearing on Barletta. Let's take a 10 minute break. Uh, so uh, maybe my computer will work downstairs. <laughs> okay, so I'll see, oh, what time is it? It's uh, 48, we'll be back at 10. Okay. Um, can I ask a procedure? Uh, do we leave Zoom and then come back in? Uh, no, no, just stay, okay. just stay. Uh, you can uh, turn off your camera and your mic. Right, right. Yes, just I just stay. didn't know. Thank you. You're welcome.
Pat, are you there? I'm here. It's Diane. I got my iPad to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's Diane. I'm in as guest. I heard we're not being recorded, are we? Uh, we shouldn't be. Who's this? It's it's Pat, Diane. This is Marsha. We can hear you. Uh, yeah, but it's being recorded. I I don't know who was talking. It 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 looks like hi. This is Cindy Pat. It looks like you are being recorded, and it sounds like Diane Bertuccio to me. It is. I just wanted it to is. wish hi, Pat Diane. well. Oh, thank you. I Diane. just wanted to wish you 